Hi everyone! Welcome to this week's training and I'm classing this training as almost a part two um, because the first training that I did identifying your triggers is um, like a part one to this one so if you've not seen part one yet make sure you go and check that out what to do is if you go to the guide section all of my free training are there and um, identifying your triggers will be the one at the very top any issues let me know um, and I will happily send you the link directly um, and the reason why I split these workshops up into two parts is because identifying your triggers is one thing but managing them is something very different and I wanted to do it justice I didn't want the workshop to be rushed by any means so that's why I felt it was more appropriate to do them in two parts it also prevents that feeling or reduces that chance of feeling overwhelmed um, by lots and lots of information and um, certainly when we talk about triggers we can get triggered because we are discussing <clears throat> we're discussing them we're identifying them and today we're going to be talking about managing them so just doing these sort of educational pieces in bite-sized parts can be really helpful so if you've not received the worksheet please reach out drop a note in the comments and I will be sure to send that over to you likewise for the previous trainings and um, I have a worksheet for every single training that I do I love a handout um, myself and my other um, coaches that we we have a group and we were talking about how we all love a handout so if you are like us make sure that you drop me a line and I will send you those handouts for each and every workshop that I do. Lastly or not lastly I've got so much to say today um, if you have um, a woman that you feel would benefit from being part of this group please let me know i am really looking to expand the light up your inner power um facebook group and for those who don't have facebook if you do have anyone that you feel would still benefit from the training i have a youtube channel where i download and put all of my facebook lives to to make sure that i am as reachable as possible for everyone who <clears throat> excuse me clearing my throat chakra there um yeah i want to make sure that i'm as accessible to all women who do feel that they need that support that healing process around that self-discovery as well i have also started a blog life of a life coach i do this on tiktok but i also update my instagram and I'm looking to start sharing some of the content on Facebook as well. I did put a um, question earlier this week just to see if anyone would be interested in following it. So if you do, let me know because it's just really important that I make sure that the group's content is aligned with what you need it to be as part of your healing journey. And the reason why I started this blog is so I can share my life as a life coach but also share part of me and my vulnerabilities and how I kind of manage things and also to, also to acknowledge that I am very much human I am still very much going through that continued self-discovery that continued self-healing it's, it's, it's never ending it's constant so showing you the things that I do can really help um, with your own journey as well sometimes just learning from other people and connecting um, with like-minded people who have or are going through similar to you so make sure you check out my blog um, and yes lastly I always say lastly but as I say I've got so much to say <laughs> um, 
I do have my two amazing programs, The Solace Project, which is a three month program, and that first initial step onto that healing and self-discovery journey. I then have my Light Up Your Inner Power six month group, um, and both of them have weekly um, group discussions. There's opportunities to have one-to-one -one coaching as well as an additional cost but these programs are so aligned with um, my purpose as a coach to coach women who have experienced emotional abuse and to support them to live the life they were told they never could. Um, details of that are on my website. As always, I will send my connection call link in the comments below to make sure that if you are interested in my programs or just want to chat, want to sit and have a virtual coffee, let me know and book a call. Um, so I'll book, I'll pop that link in the comments below as well as my website because I have revamped my website. I'm super proud of it. I'm not good with, oh, maybe that's a bit of a self-forming belief. I... IT is perhaps not my strength, but it's becoming a little bit more um, strengthened. Um, so I'm super proud of my website. I took a long time to make it my own. So yes, check it out as well. So five ways to manage your triggers. So as I say, if you've not got the worksheet, which we will go through as well, drop me a line and I will send that to you. So the five ways that I feel are very important to identify and manage your triggers. So the first one is actually to identify your trigger. Now, this was the key learning curve of the workshop last week. So if you've not watched it as the part one, make sure you go and watch it because I talk about five ways to identify your trigger. But I guess the main point within that is knowledge is power, ladies. And I always say this, I harp on every single time I do a workshop, knowledge is power. So if we have the knowledge to identify our triggers, it is a one step further to managing our ability to, um, well, to, to manage those triggers. So that would be the first one. And as I say, my workshop last week covers that in full. So make sure that you go through that, go through the worksheet as well, because it is a key step to, to supporting our ability to manage our triggers. The second one is practicing self-compassion. Now what we find, or certainly what I find, and I'm sure I'm not alone, is when I am triggered, certainly before, I used to have a lot of shame and guilt around it. A lot of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of our triggers cause us to feel vulnerable. They cause us to feel distressed and quite alone sometimes. And it can be really helpful to really reflect on that self-compassion because it allows us to reduce that feelings of shame and guilt when we are triggered. So how do you um, practice self-compassion? So watch out for this because there is a workshop that's gonna be coming out in the next few weeks around how to practice self-compassion, but I will give you a little spoiler alert. It's just generally showing you the love and care that you would show to other people. So really reflecting on looking after yourself during those triggering moments can really help to develop that self-compassion. Showing yourself some understanding around why you're maybe feeling like this can really also help to, I guess, to deliver that response that you would expect to show someone else if they were being triggered as well. So the number two, showing yourself self-compassion is a key one because it really helps us to just take a bit of a back step to start looking after ourselves, to really reflect on where we're at and then being just more in tune with that will allow us to move forward that bit more. So that would be my second piece of advice for managing your triggers. Now, put a number one 
in the box if you feel in the comments box if you feel that you show yourself as much self-compassion as you deserve because the chances are you probably don't I am very much working on this myself really trying to increase that self-compassion um, because it is so key to self-healing and promote self-discovery as well it's amazing skill set to have it's something that's quite rare nowadays we do go through a lot of shame and guilt especially as women so promoting that um self-compassion is so powerful so put a number one in the comments ladies if you resonate with that and if you want to show yourself more self-compassion there is no drawbacks to it it's such an amazing quality to give yourself it it is a gift Number three is to engage in self-talk and this kind of follows on from that self-compassion. So offering you that reassurance, offering you that, that permission to feel that trigger, to acknowledge it but to start to manage it through that self-talk, that self-soothe, that reassurance. And this is a key part of my program, Light Up Your Inner Power, with that self-soothing um, ability, that emotional regulation, because when we're triggered, it we're generally our adrenaline is very, very high. So having that skill set to really start to talk yourself down is really, really powerful. It can also prompt rational thinking as well. So, for example, if I was triggered, and I can either say to myself out loud or in my head, Leanne, you're okay. Take a big deep breath. <sighs> it's natural that you have been triggered today because this is something that has happened to you before. It's a trigger that reoccurs for you. You're doing okay, you've survived it before, you will survive it again. So just prompting that rational thought <clears throat> can really, really help to manage those triggers in the here and now and just engaging in once again that self-talk, that positive self-love, self-care towards yourself can really promote that ability to manage our triggers as much as we are able to in those moments. Now, Something that I should also mention is when we are triggered, generally we are very highly regulated. We're very um, heightened, our adrenaline's really high. So we need to keep it, keep these managing techniques as simple as possible. The reason why is our brain will go into survival mode. So it will shut down a lot of areas that we are usually used to having and having accessibility to but when we're triggered our brain just fu um, functions on the ones that we actually need in that moment so simple sentences to yourself very self-soothing short sentences within that self-talk is really key because adding lots of complex theories and things like that is just not going to work in that moment so that's a little bit of a sciencey thing there. <laughs> the fourth one is to plan ahead. And the reason why I say that is sometimes we are fortunate enough to be aware that we will we will be triggered if we go into a specific situation. For an example, those who maybe have social anxiety, going into a busy restaurant or bar or club might trigger that response. So having those plans ahead and really reflecting on when you'll be triggered can be really key of managing that. So the planning could entail who are you going to be with, what coping strategies you're going to have and we'll come on to that as the fifth one um, and also reflecting on what you're going to do in that instance of being triggered. You can also reflect on how to maybe reduce that trigger. So for example, 
um, pre-booking a quieter area within the restaurant um, with sort of reduced people around you, having conversations with the restaurant manager and saying, this, you know, I would like to have like a, to be sat in the choir area of the restaurant. All of those little bits can really help reduce our triggers. Being boundaried as well. Sometimes we need to get the balance of not holding ourselves back, but having boundaries in place. So putting boundaries in to support that trigger response as well. So for an example, it could be that if you drink alcohol, your triggers generally are higher and you feel that you're not able to control them as much. So just putting in that boundary to yourself and to others that you're going to reduce your alcohol whilst at that restaurant. These can really, really help just to pre-plan um, your your management of that triggers. So pre-planning is another one that is very key. The last one is reflecting on coping strategies. Now, put a number one in the comments if you would like a workshop on coping strategies, because this is such a huge topic. And what I find is we kind of branch off into two different ways of coping. We've got maybe our unhealthier ones that are maybe not ones that are sustainable or are maybe of detriment to us if we sustain them. And we also have our positive coping strategies. So for the purpose of this workshop, we will be focusing on the positive coping strategies that we can adopt. Um, but yeah, let me know if you would be interested in a workshop on, on coping strategies because I think that would be a really good one to, to consider. In fact, I'm gonna write that down coping strategies. So reflecting on coping strategies that work for you and ones that are accessible to you is really important as the fifth way to manage our triggers efficiently. So for example, it could be using your breath. So science indicates that if we take in um, Oh my gosh, my mind's gone blank there. If we take in oxygen, it helps us, um, it helps the brain to function better. I'm not very good at explaining science. Um, but yeah, science says that if we um, breathe more, it is helpful for us in terms of coping strategies. And I've definitely not explained that well. <laughs> but what we find is a coping strategy that can be helpful is to take three deep breaths. The reason why we do three is because it can really help to focus on a number and it's not as prolonged as a higher number. Sorry, I, I don't know where I'm going with this spiel. It doesn't really make sense. It kind of makes sense in my head. So let's do that together just now. So. Now, put a number one in the comments if that made you feel more calm. Because <clears throat> breath work is such an incredible way to regulate ourselves. It helps with our um, nervous system. It helps with our brain activity. I think that's what I was kind of trying to say before. Um, and it can really help to work on self-regulating ourselves. And self-regulation for those who have checked out my program is a key one within the Light Up Your Inner Power and it also has aspects within the Solace Project as well. Another coping strategy could be to distract yourself. One that's really great is um, to reflect on one thing that you can see in the room, one thing that you can smell in the room, one thing that you can hear. Um, and using techniques like that can be really helpful just to distract yourself from the main source of your trigger. 
Another one um, that can be helpful in terms of coping strategies is to remove yourself from the situation if able and safe to do so. Um, and the reason why we do that is because sometimes we do need to leave that that triggering event, person or experience to allow us to engage in that kind of that self-regulation and to ultimately to start to feel safe again. So yeah, really starting to reflect on your coping strategies, what that looks like for you. And that is why I have included it in the worksheet today. So going to the worksheet, what I would really like for you all to do is to initially list five things that you love about yourself and the reason why I've put that one there is to enhance that self-compassion to really work on it and to develop our ability to show ourselves that self-love because it's really really important to reduce that shame and that guilt that we usually have when we have experienced um, our triggers. The second box is to write down five things you can tell yourself in a moment when you are triggered. So looking at number three, that self-talk, reflecting on that short, efficient, effective um, sentences that you can say to yourself that you know should help you to just reduce your anxiety and stress around being triggered that bit more. So yeah, thinking of five different ways that you can start to engage in that positive self-talk once again it can really help then what if what if any measures you can put in to reduce the triggers effect on you so that's the planning so once again really reflecting on what control you do have in that situation when you have been triggered and to really reflect on that ability of inputting that forward thinking to enhance your ability to manage your triggers as able as you are. So reflecting on the measures that you can put in for that. And then lastly, your three best coping strategies. Once again, I probably will be doing a workshop on coping strategies very soon. Um, again, if you are interested in that, drop me a message and let me know. And the reason why I have put this worksheet um, in this structure as this is in effect your action plan. So you can print this out numerous times, you can do it per trigger, um, but just having these lists of um, the boxes can really help you to reflect on your action plan of how you can manage your triggers efficiently. So reflecting on that self-compassion, reflecting on um, your, your self-talk, thinking and planning ahead, what measures you can put in place to reduce those triggers, impacts on you, and then to reflect on the coping strategies. And then, as I'd mentioned before, going back and watching part one of identifying your triggers can also help because education is power. <laughs> So yes, so that is the whistle stop tour of five ways to um, to manage your triggers. I hope you enjoyed it. Put a number one in the comments if you feel like you have learned something today. Lastly, what I would like to say is I am currently creating an amazing planner for my future workshops. As you will be aware, I do weekly workshops every Tuesday at 1pm on the Light Up Your Inner Power group and they are also downloaded onto my YouTube channel at Happy Luya 2. Um, so if you have any suggestions of training that you would like me to do, please let me know. I am so open to researching, to learning with you all and I really love to, to make sure that I offer such a diverse um, range of topics because self-healing and self-discovery 
is such a huge topic. It looks different for so many people and it's really important for me as a coach to capture all of that in these weekly trainings for you all. That is what I'm here for ladies. I am here to support you through your journey to light up your inner power. So if I can help you in any way, shape or form, please let me know and drop me a message. I am sending you as always, so much love and light. Take care, ladies, and have an amazing rest of the week.